Hello SGBers, I'm Companion Wolf, aka Rob Wolf on Facebook. Welcome to another Smile Game Builder tutorial. I thought I'd do another tips and tricks tutorial this week. I'd like to briefly mention first that whenever I refer to parallel events, it means auto run events, notably the auto start, synchronize, and run repeatedly. And whenever I retur re refer to conditional branches, it usually involves check event switches or variable box checks or basically anything with a yes no branches i guess this is just a port over from rpg maker and as you'll you'll see during this tutorial i'm using a different set of maps for it this actually contains some of the resources I'm creating for the Old Ruins High Quality Asset Pack, which is more of an experiment right now. Development on this is ongoing on and off, pretty much when inspiration and motivation strikes. And so this brings us to the intro. So for the first tip, this is a simple barrel pushing puzzle. The idea is that each of the barrels belongs on a specific mud or dirt patch. When a barrel is placed correctly, you'll hear a noise and it'll remain in place. When all of the barrels are in place, then something will happen, i.e. this chest will appear. So we'll obviously need three barrels for each of the mud patches. I've pre-created one already, which we can then copy and paste for the others. For the first sheet, the sound effect is the drawer, which kind of sounds like a, a barrel. And then we set the walk, make walk event to walk in the opposite direction. And then that means that when the player pushes, when the player presses the action key, it'll be pushed in the opposite direction. Then we add an advanced variable where, in this case variable 3, the event x is equals to the event's x coordinate, and the same with event y is equal to this event's y coordinate. Then we add a variable box check if event x is equals to 14, and under yes, if it is, the event should be equals to 5. And if these two conditions are met, then we just simply play the chest effect. That's to ensure that it's secure in place. And then we turn the local switch on, and on event sheet 2, the condition should be local switch is on and then triggered automatically one time we simply add one to another variable the barrels in place which will check to see if all three barrels are placed correctly so then when we copy this we can paste it on the map and then edit it uh, this would be barrel two it's exactly the same, except we would only change the x coordinates, and in this case, it would be 16, I think. And then nothing else really needs to be done. So for the third barrel, once again, copy it. Only this time. We'll change the x, event x to 18. And that should be it. <clears throat> we'll create a chest, which obviously would be under searchables. And then you have the chest. In this case, we're just using the default one. And then in the advanced editing, in the advanced settings, at the variable box, which would be the barrels in place, is equals to 3. So this will only appear if all three barrels are correctly placed. 
Uh, let's play test. First one in place. Second one in place. And the third one. So, we can collect the prize. And the next one is a quick trick for using the spotlight, which is under effects. And then you have the spotlight. But we won't be using any of these just yet. The basic idea behind spotlights is to limit visibility on the map, except for a small spot around the player. We'll use this dungeon for this and in the map settings where the light source would be I don't know darkness or night or something. In this case I'm just going to use dungeon 2. So we create an event On the sheet then, the trigger is auto start. We would then create a variable for the playtime seconds in the advanced box. And create a conditional branch for the seconds as if that is equal to 10. Then it would display the spotlight image, which is called demask. and we'd keep the zoom at 100% under the no if the seconds is equals to 20 then we change the zoom to 200 and again just copy this and then paste it and if the variable is equals to, say, 25, then we decrease this again to 100. And have a default, where if none of these conditions apply under the last no, we just paste the image when we play test it we have a little circle the spotlight after 15 seconds of play time the area of visibility should increase you can play around there it is and then it decreases again you can play around with the variable box check operators and timing, adding more conditional branches to suit your needs. If, say, the seconds is greater than 10, underneath the yes you would add if the seconds are less than 20, then you display a certain size. And you, when you're playing around with them, you can suit it all to your particular needs. This is just a simple technique that you can use. Of course there's plenty more scope for improvement and a lot more that you could do with this such as increasing visibility if you find a flashlight or even batteries for it although I haven't tried this out yet I think it should be possible to increase or reduce visibility after multiples of time have elapsed for instance say after every 15 seconds it toggles between decreasing and increasing the visible area. One caveat when using this, because this is actually a static image overlaid onto the screen to simulate a light source, anything below 100% will cause an anomaly. So let's just change one of the uh, 
one of the display image we'll change it to zoom 80% and then play test again as you can see the image is reduced to the point that you can see the map beyond the intended darkened area which defeats the purpose of having a spotlight and then once it's increased again beyond 100% it works properly there is a way to bypass this but that and all of the other techniques and improvements to this particular technique will probably merit a tutorial of its own in, in, in the future and by the way as with all images the maximum zoom amount for the spotlight appears to be 300% next we're visiting an old friend the lander I promised a while ago in one of the early tutorials that I'd show how to properly climb up ladders climb up and down ladders so starting with the up one then at the base of the ladder oh dear what have we done okay on the first sheet when making with contact players the trigger we have a sound effect which is the same as move and then walk up make the player walk walk one up and then make sure that pass over elevation is checked and collide with player is unchecked um, we won't play test yet because ignoring the event at the top means that we won't be able to get down so we'll just copy this and then paste it at the top and then when we go down this should be down um, this time we'll walk down one step and then pass through events should be checked now if we play test it's not too realistic is it so um, back into the ladder down event and then we'll change player's orientation to face up and then in the make player walk fix the direction checked play test again And then in first person, you can then move away to wherever it is you are going. The final one is a trap activated by a switch and deactivated when the switch is stepped on again. In addition, while the trap is active, it'll whittle away at the party's HP or MP, your choice, at a new blank event somewhere on the map. In which case I've already done it. So we'll just open up the settings. In the conditions, add a condition where the switch blue is equals on and for the trigger you have a choice automatic one time only will activate once and you can take a huge chunk out of HP or MP your choice the auto start synchronize run repeatedly will continuously bombard the player whittling away at their HP or MP um, do not use triggered automatically repeated this will just completely disable the player movement and you won't be able to do anything. Display an animation which is under special effects. In this case I've just used the Spirit Blast 2. Set the alignment at the center of this event. Next you can either place a flash screen and 
and set it however many seconds you want. I kept the default half a second. Or you can display another animation, this time at the center of the player. I just chose weak hit. Or you can use both as I've done here. It depends on what type of effect you want to use. And then under stats and items, this is where it would be. Re restore or reduce HP MP. We would decrease HP by two. Um, unfortunately, there's no feature to apply this to the entire party. So if you wanted other members affected as well, you'll need to do the same one for each of them. And then of course we need to create a switch which is under events, traps and the new blue button which I've used here already. It's just the default. Nothing else has changed. So playtesting. Let's move the camera a little bit so we can face the trap area. And the switch is on. You can see it's whittling away. And then stepping on the switch again, deactivates it. To make things more interesting and a little more difficult, perhaps, instead of using a single switch, you can use another one. For example, placing red switch. Again, it's just the defaults and adding a switch to turn blue off. We'll reset the blue one. Then on the second sheet, in our traps, The condition is that the red switch is now turned on and leaving the event details blank. Likewise turning the red switch off in the blue button. Uh, right. We'll reset the red button. This time if we play test it again It'll turn off and the red will be on the floor. Blue button see that the red button. And this brings us to the end of another tutorial. In the next few tutorials I'm planning on delving into assets, how to create them and then import them into SGB starting with the terrain. I don't know much about the 3D objects yet as I'm still learning Blender so we probably won't cover that for a while. It'll just be like the 2D images like um, terrain, windows and cursors and that kind of thing. In the meantime I'd like to thank everyone once again for the comments, suggestions, subs and likes. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, click like and subscribe for more videos. Visit Twitter, Facebook and the blog. All of the links are below in the description. Thanks for watching. Until the next time.